about uh, trying to predict the spread of NBA games uh, using, a, using a Bayesian model. The basic problem that we're looking at is, uh, so, you know, um, a bookmaker sets some odds for an NBA game. And, you know, they, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with how odds are set, but basically they give a certain number of, some team is favored by a number of points. And uh, if that team wins by more than that amount, then they've beaten the spread. Otherwise, if they uh, win by less than that amount or they lose the game, uh, the other team has beaten the spread. So the trick is, uh, are there inefficiencies within the bookmakers, uh, or rather, like how can we use the data, the historical data from teams in order to um, in order to beat the bookmaker essentially? Uh, so first of all, uh, we look at how the bookkeepers line actually perform against the actual playoff data. So the red line is the baseline of the actual score offset between the two teams in each, in each game, and the dots indicate how the line is set by the bookkeeper. So we can see that the bookkeeper is actually not doing a great job predicting the actual score offset. Well, they do that whether intentionally or not intentionally, but this leaves us a big margin of beating the line. So for classifier selection, we choose naive Bayes model because first our data is relatively small. Well, we, have, we only use one season for our training data because the teams uh, perform uh, differently over from season to season. And that's about, about uh, 1,200 games. And the other thing we the other point uh, the other thing we like about the eight base is that it doesn't only, it doesn't only give us a label for the uh, for the game but also a probability, which is actually very useful on betting games because that can help us assess the risk of uh, of our bet. Um, so the problem of naive base is that it cannot predict unseen data. So and so which means we cannot predict the outcome of a game between two teams that has never played in this season before. So we actually clustering all the, all the teams into five clusters. Right, so the, so the idea behind this is that to use a Gaussian mixture model to generate, uh, to uh, separate the teams into uh, clusters based on their similarity of play. Uh, the idea behind this is that then instead of uh, trying to predict a matchup between two teams from two different conferences who have never played before halfway into the season, you're actually, you actually have some history to go to fall back on uh, when making your prediction. So uh, this is an example of, uh, you know, of the, the clustering that, that we got. Um, you know, if you're familiar with the, uh, with the NBA at all this season, you might be able to assess sort of how good this is. Um, I, I, as a basketball fan, I would say I think this is very reasonable. Uh, so, we, uh, so we broke these teams up into, these clusters are based on what are called like four factors. They're ba they basically have to do with uh, how well the teams shoot, how well they rebound, um, how many turnovers they have, and uh, their free throws. So those are basically kind of like considered four factors of basketball success, plus two numbers called the offensive and defensive rating, which are basically represent points scored and uh, given up per 100 possessions. So those are the, those are the 10 uh, features that we use to generate these, uh, these clusters. Um, so, in terms of our uh, naive based model, uh, this is actually the model we use. Uh, the features we use is uh, the home and away team clustering, uh, the home team uh, defense and offensive score in, with, uh, against the team in that, in the opponent's cluster, and then the away team's ratings against the teams in the home team's cluster. And then we figure out that uh, the, the rest of the day is between uh, before the game, it's actually pretty important, so we add that to the to the features, and then our labels is actually not just whether or not the home team is gonna be is gonna beat the line, but how much is gonna beat the line. So the plot is actually our result. So the black the the line indicates the baseline of the score offset, and then the black dots. Wait, no. So so the line indicates the uh, the handicapper's line. And then the black dots are the actual game result, and then the red dots are our correct predictions, and the the blue dots are our correct prediction, and the red dots are false predictions, and we yield a 58% accuracy. And further, uh, since we want to know not only not like how the how the, like not only not the most likely uh, score that the team is going to beat the line, but whether it's, not, it's going to be the line. So we want like a binary result. And here's our binary result, which uh, is whether or not the, the team's going to be the line. 
Yeah, and 58% is, uh, doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, basketball is a dynamic game. A lot of things can happen. There are many variables. This is just you know, team clustering plus, uh, plus naive bays gives you that, which I think is a pretty good, uh, good figure.